Hello everybody, it's Trey McLean of From the Stands with Trey McLean. I am joined today by your favorite Cleveland Browns quarterback and former Texas Longhorn, Colt McCoy. How are you doing today, Colt? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Thanks for joining us. So uh, I want to start this off. How's your health? Health is good. You know, I've, I've recovered, I've cleared, and I took a few shots this year, especially late in the year, but I'm feeling a lot better. So you're cleared, you're ready to go? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I still do a few things, but I'm, I'm cleared. Excellent. Good to hear. You know, as a college football fan, a lot of fans know the way, the format. There's the season, there's the off season, there's spring practice, and then there's summer. It's pretty segmented and pretty pretty familiar. It's not quite the same in the NFL. you got the season, I know you have the draft, and summer. What kind of off season is it in the NFL? Is it more uh, you personally doing it, or is it team activities? Well, this will be my first off season, honestly, as, as a uh, starting quarterback. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm anxious for it. I think it'll be huge for me and for our football team. Really kind of go through an offseason with our coaches and through our system, and I think it's going to do wonders for us as a team. So I honestly don't know the whole routine, but I, you know, because we didn't have one last year, and I'm excited about it. Super. I know that I've heard some former players in the NFL and guys that played at Texas say the NFL is the dream. You know, all the trappings of uh, being a paid athlete are great, but it's a full-time job, and it's always there, and it's a grind. As a quarterback, I wonder for you, is that workload, that increase, is it more mental, or is it physical, or is it both? I would say, you know, it's very similar to, you know, kind of the same jump you make from high school to college. You have to do the same thing from college level to the NFL. I mean, you're playing with against the biggest, the fastest, the strongest guys, and you have to be in, in great shape, And but you also, you know, 90% of the game is mental, and, you know, creating an edge that way, and I think that's that's obviously, you know, for a quarterback, that, that's obviously mostly where the game is played. So it's a little of both, but I would say uh, the middle side of it and the preparation and the timing is anticipation of things is, is huge. So, you know, you got quite a few Longhorns up there with you now in Cleveland, which is it's good to see. And uh, the latest addition was Chris Obanaya. Did you have anything to do with Cleveland getting him in there, or was that just a, a really awesome coincidence for the Longhorn fans out there? No, I mean, we, we needed a running back at the time. We had some bad luck with guys, and guys were getting hurt. And I knew Obi could play, and I knew he was on the practice squad in Houston. And I kind of asked him if they would be interested in that. We were, and, you know, we got him in there, and he played great for us. He was a difference maker. And, you know, we wish we could have won a few more games last year. We were in, we were in most of the games that we played. And, uh, you know, we're close to making that jump. We just got to continue to work and, and uh, have a great offseason this year. But Obi definitely did a good job for us. Is that a weird process in the NFL? You know, in college, you'll have a few guys leave early for the NFL or graduate or leave a team. But in the NFL, you'll have situations where you'll bring in a guy midseason that you've never met before, and all of a sudden you're playing with him on a Sunday. Is that a hard process to get your head around, or is that something you just got to deal with and learn as you go? Yeah, it's tough. You know, there's not much a sense of a team. As uh, far in, in my career, there hasn't been a lot of, there's been a lot of change. But, you know, I think the good teams in the NFL are pretty consistent. They have the same players you know, year to year and, and uh, kind of build around that. So I think that's what we're really searching to do in Cleveland. And, and hopefully we can do that. That would be ideal. But it is a little bit different than it is playing college, for sure. Now let me ask you something. What's harder? Is it harder playing at Kyle Field, or is it harder watching your brother play at Kyle Field? <laughs> you know, honestly, that was the only game I got to watch on TV last year. Uh, the Texas games, you know, they weren't playing as much up in the up in the Northeast, up in Ohio. Uh, I got to watch a lot of Ohio State and Michigan games, but on Thanksgiving night, that, that was fun. It was hard to watch, man. I was on the edge of my seat for sure, but it, it turned out great. He looked kind of like you on that that fourth quarter run when you scored that long touchdown, except you got in and he got lit up, right? <laughs> yeah, he, he did a nice job. You know, quarterback is evaluated at the end of the game, and they they pulled it out. Yeah, McCoy brothers two and zero. Last two trips to Texas A and M for the Horns. Not a bad stat to have on the wall, huh? That's right. I understand you're going to be in town uh, and down on campus uh, the weekend of the spring game. Is that right? I will be at the spring game, yes. Yeah, and uh, you're going to be at the university co-op on uh, the Saturday before that. Yep, that's the plan. Loudest right. place you've ever played in college. Toughest and loudest. I'll say my junior and senior year, anywhere we play on the road, uh, whether that be A&M, Oklahoma State, the Cotton Bowl, Missouri, Nebraska, those, those places are those, those both the loudest place, you know, that's hard to say. Anytime you play in, a, in an indoor, it gets pretty loud. Uh, but on the road, honestly, one of the, the loudest places that I played was basketball freshman year. I just remember it being extremely loud. 
played in some louder environments, but that one sticks out in my head the most. And it was snowing in October and November. That's just not right. Yeah. I guess you're used to that now. And it was fun. Yeah. Who's the best player you played against as a Texas Longhorn? Again, I, I go back to uh, my freshman year when we played at Ohio State at home. It might be because that's the first like true test that I ever faced. But I remember playing against Ohio State in their defense. They had James Moore and I, Brian Golston, just a bunch of guys on that team. And I remember getting lit up two or three times. I think, what am I doing here? And, <laughs> That was six out of my mind, but there was a lot of, of outstanding football players I played against, but as a team, that was, that was an eye-opener for sure. Is there any good Mexican food in Cleveland? Absolutely not. Is there any food in Cleveland that you like now that you can't get here? Well, I grew up on steak and potatoes, so I can always find that up there, but there's, there's not as good a barbecue or Mexican food up there. Sounds like a franchise opportunity for you, man. <laughs> I see you got a couple of cow guys, at least one cow guy on your roster. Any bets with the uh, cow guys for the Holiday Bowl, or are they too chicken? Oh, yeah, I won lots of money. Fantastic. When you were in college, uh, the Spanish language guys, I believe it was a Texas Tech, your freshman year, hooked you with the name Pistolas. And in my article I write, I ran with that for four years. Called you that every time I got the chance. What does the media come up with for the Texan Colt McCoy in Ohio? Any good nicknames? Um, not really. To be honest, some of the guys in the locker room and on the team, they call me Pistola, too. Somebody had heard that when I was in college, and that kind of stuck up there, so it's still with me. Excellent. And final question, any chance the mustache comes back? <laughs> I had it last year. You know, it's one of those things where I think if I can get a few guys to, to join with me and then get our wives, well, I think we'll bring it back. Sounds like a revolution in the making. All right, Colt, I appreciate you joining us. Thanks very much. All right, thanks.